Hi, this is Brian, coming straight to you from Toy. That's on YouTube. In today's episode of Should I See It, we'll be reviewing The Void, a much-anticipated gore horror Lovecraftian film from Canadian filmmakers Stephen Kotansky and Jeremy Gillespie. Creators Kotansky and Gillespie may be known to some of you as the minds behind Astron 6, which have made a slew of comedic 80s-ish sci-fi and horror movies for the 10 years now. Personally, this is the first movie that I'd seen from the duo. The Void concerns a group of random people who show up at and are subsequently trapped inside a soon-to-be-abandoned hospital. This happens during what appears to be an eerie, world-altering doomsday event. There's loud noises in the distance signaling the heralding of demonic angels, I suppose. A creepy special ed version of the KKK shows up and gathers outside, and they're brandishing knives and stabbing anyone who tries to leave the hospital. Worse, a malignant evil force that is somehow tied to the events outside lurks within the hospital. It's busy transforming people willy-nilly into Cronenberg Carpenter love children. Our story concerns whether our human host can survive the night without becoming inside-out tentacled skeleton freaks. Now that sounds good, right? I mean, it looks great, actually. The effects in this movie are practical and the CGI is extremely limited. This is what the masses have been bitching about and itching for ever since the 90s came and took a huge computer-generated shit on film effects. This is the one element of the movie I cannot find any fault with, and I applaud the creative efforts put forth here in showing the audience a menagerie of mutant monsters. They did an excellent job with this movie on that front. With that said, in every other department, The Void is no exception to the previously mentioned rule of Astron 6 being an 80s celebration station in terms of movie making. In fact, that 80s fixation is actually probably the worst part of this movie. Really, it's the only part of the movie, but, you know, more on that later. To put it simply, if you're looking for an extremely basic, heroin-like injection of 80s imagery and cinematic motifs, say, the vaporwave equivalent of a movie, then by all means, chase the neon dragon into the void. You'll probably be satisfied if the trip doesn't kill you with its overdose level of 80s-ness. However, if you're like me, and you're put off by movies that are just an endless barrage of where have I seen this exact scene before, moments that are like that, then steer clear of this movie, because it's all hand-me-downs and copies down here in the void, folks. Now, it sounds like I might hate this movie. To be honest, I don't hate it, but I wasn't entertained by it, and I think it has some serious flaws. See, I'm extremely skeptical of movies that are considered tributes. In my experience, a movie being a tribute is a hard quality to honestly achieve. It's very easy to slip from tribute status to just being a straight-up ripoff. This is a fine, 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 emphasis, fine line to manage. So fine, you're better off not trying, really, in my opinion, lest you fall into the same hole or chasm or void. For a tribute movie to work, it's often best to try and do something completely new while including some brief swashes of your inspiration amongst your many more numerous and original ideas. The movie needs to stand on its own two feet, or in this case six tentacles, and be something original and fresh. It can have something in it that a mega film fan will recognize as being passed down from before, but it needs to also have something and a lot of something that we haven't seen before. Your movie can't survive on being a wink and a nod to the audience that proclaims that you also had eyes and a pulse during the VHS era. That's not a feat. Of course we all know the best 80s movies by now, so including them in your movie doesn't really do anything for you. Sadly, The Void is a great demonstration of how not to do a tribute. As much as it wants to be a way tubular tribute, the movie I saw was someone bending John Carpenter over, tearing out his guts, plastering them on the movie, and then saying it's a tribute, not a ripoff. Also, John Carpenter's mouth is surgically attached to Fulci's asshole. So how did The Void get it so wrong, you might be asking. You might be thinking, so what if it copied a few things? Well, the simple fact is, is that if you took away the tribute elements, and to be honest, the whole scenes that are lifted directly from other directors and movies, you're left with a very boring movie. The Void's characters are unlikable, the music is forgettable, the visuals are muddled, and they're a chore to put up with in some parts. Jesus wept, will you stop hiding your effects behind a strobe light? The story is non-existent, and it doesn't really matter to begin with, sure, but at least other movies have had stories where this one failed. And let's be honest here, the villain, the main part of this is supposed to be the creepiest thing, is perfectly senseless to the point of being goofy. He's more prone to giving long Saturday morning cartoon villain monologues than meaningful creepy dialogue. Let me get this straight, I'm supposed to believe that this grieving doctor who's communing with Lovecraftian gods would give two dams about trying to convince some estranged couple to join him on a cruise ride to hell? What? The Void wants to, and it needs to be a good 80s movie tribute. Not a bad one. 
Why would I spend time on this movie that eagerly reminds me of many better films? The creators seem to have forgotten that I could just go watch those good 80s horror movies instead. As I said, it's a dangerous line to traverse when you're doing a tribute movie. With that said, I did my homework, and what follows will be a bit-by-bit -bit reference piece of scenes and elements in the void that are, to lightly use the term, borrowed from other movies. I'll show the void on the left and the inspiration movie on the right. If you like the void for whatever reason, you can use this to discover the better ancestors of the movie. Otherwise, if you haven't seen The Void and you'd rather watch good 80s horror movies, then please use this following list to really explore a wonderful decade of movies. So I wonder if the creators didn't think we'd notice all these similarities. I mean, there's some movies in here that aren't that well known, but it's a pretty comprehensive 80s horror movie list of, you know, at least five good 80s horror movie recommendations. So I'm surprised that they have all these similarities in here and then they didn't have the uh, consideration to thank John Carpenter in the credits of the Void movie. And then they didn't thank Fulci either, and it seems pretty blatant that they ripped him off, especially with the ending there. As I was watching and editing this video, you know, putting it together, I realized how much of a copy job it was, because it's so similar. Even the beats are the same. And for them to just copy that and to not give credit, it's kind of questionable. Uh, hopefully they'll release a statement or something saying, hey, you know, we didn't mean to copy all this, but from what I can see, it looks pretty blatant. Uh, so there might be some angry Italians <laughs> coming after the Astron 6 here pretty soon. So what did you guys think of the video? Let me know. If you liked it, please tell me. I'm going to do some more video reviews and movie reviews, cinematic opinions, all that stuff. If you didn't agree with me, that's great. Hurl some flaming invective my way. That's cool. Uh, I guess this is Brian for Toy signing out. I just want to remind you, you know, life sucks, but your movies don't have to. All of these things are designed to frighten a monkey.